This video is the first video of three covering section 2.6 of your text, which is over related rates. So for this first video, I'm going to take my time um, walking you through my process when I solve a related rates question, and then we will do an example dealing with water ripples, which is a 2D circle. Uh, following that, you'll have two additional videos, one for a sphere and one for triangles. So I'm going to take you through this practice problem with me using the strategy that I typically use when I solve a question like this. And so before we even start to read the question, what I want you to understand is that essentially you're going to have two sets of values. You're going to have a set of values that is static or unchanging. So that's going to be um, values at a moment in time. or a formula. So when we do our question, we'll be looking for those static values. You'll also have variable or changing values. So not static, not the same, but changing. And those would be um, rates and also derivatives because of course we know that if we take the derivative of a formula, that's going to be the rate of change of that formula. So let's read this question now and find out what we know and what we don't know um, based on static and variable values. A rock is dropped into a pond causing circular ripples. If the radius of the ripple is increasing at one foot per second, so I'm gonna stop right there. The radius is increasing at one foot per second. That is a rate, and so that is a dr, which is the change in radius over dt. The change in radius with respect to time is one foot per second. Now keep in mind that anything I put on the variable side will have something related to it on the static side. So if this is dr over dt, that means over here I'm going to have an r equals something. Um, it says, at what rate is the area of the circle increasing? So at what rate is the area of the circle increasing implies that dA over dt, what's the change in area with respect to time, is my unknown. That's what I'm going to be solving for. And then it says when the radius reaches four feet. So this is at a moment in time when the radius reaches four feet. So that tells me this is four feet. So now I'm only missing one thing. Anything that's on the variable side has to correspond to something on the static side and vice versa. So what am I missing? I'm missing area. Well, that's easy because it's a circle and I can use a formula. So this side's going to be A equals pi r squared because that's the area, formula for the area of a circle. So this is how I would start it, is to basically find my knowns and unknowns. And of course you can draw in a picture, but it's not necessary to do so. So you can say r equals four feet dr over dt is equal to one foot per second. So you can write it right on the picture instead if you prefer. And then of course, uh, the rest of it is unknown. So from here, now I'm going to differentiate. So I'm going to start with the formula area equals pi r squared. So now I'm going to take the derivative of my function with respect to t. So everything's with respect to t. So a, the derivative, is dA, but it's with respect to t. The derivative of pi r squared is 2 pi r, but again, Using the chain rule, the chain rule says, okay, now what's the derivative of r? Well, the derivative of r with respect to t is dr over dt. 
So that's my derivative. From here, I'm going to start plugging in values that I know. dA over dt, well, that's what I'm trying to solve for. So this is going to stay dA over dt, and when I get to the end, that's going to be my solution. I still have 2, I still have pi, we know that r is 4 feet, that was one of our static values, and then dr over dt is also given to us, uh, I don't want to box it just because that will be confusing, so that is 1 foot per second. So again, it's okay whether or not you show the labels as you're going or just a label at the end. If you have trouble at the end determining what the label would be, then I suggest that you label as you go. Because now when I multiply all of this, I want the most exact answer possible, which means I'm going to keep pi in my solution. So if I take 2 times 4 times 1, I get 8. I take that times pi, I get 8 pi. And then the question is, what is the label? Well, I've got feet times feet per second. So I have two feet, which means, of course, feet squared. So eight pi square feet per second is my solution. That is the rate of change of area with respect to time when the radius reaches four feet. That was a good first practice for us. We're going to continue now in the next video with balloon inflation, which of course is a 3D circle or sphere.